Hello and welcome to the December edition of ERAD's Tips and Tricks. I'm Ralph Steubenrock, part of the professional services team here at ERAD, and today we're going to be talking about PAX Viewer Tools. So let's jump right into it. And let's start with talking about some of the basics. Um, we won't go into a lot of detail about measuring distance and those kind of things, but there are a couple of note that I'd like to speak about. Um, in particular, the 3D measure distance and 3D angle tools. So. Um, I think we all know that measuring a distance here, pretty simple, we just drag and drop, we have our measurement, but that's only in this one uh, particular slice in the stack, right? Um, let's say we have something that goes across a few images in the stack and uh, some piece of anatomy that we need to measure. Um, so let's delete this. This is where we can use the 3D measure tool. So we can start our measurement in one slice. Uh, we do a left click and then we can scroll down with the wheel into another slice, finish our measurement down here, and now we've got a measurement that spans several different slices in the stack. You'll notice the blue color here in this line tells you that part of the measurement is in this slice. If I slide back up, we'll see the blues moved over here. Now this part of the measurement's in this slice. The red is in another part of the slice. Also, if we look over here in the coronal view, we'll see uh, the measurement's visible there as well. Um, you can see where that measurement takes place or where that is in the actual coronal as well by the colors. It's also in the sagittal. If we go over here to the sagittal view, we can see that as well. And the nice part about this is we can manipulate that measurement in all planes, right? So now I can measure and move that and whatever piece of anatomy, you know, is in some strange ortho orthogonal position where we want to get that right measurement, uh, we can do that all with a 3D measurement tool. So let's delete this. And now let's talk about the uh, 3D angle tool. Um, so if we move on to a regular measure angle tool, again, this is the same. Uh, this can only be done in one plane or one slice, right? Um, if I wanted to do an angle that's uh, for some anatomy, so like perhaps somebody that's very kyphotic, this isn't a good example, um, like a, thor a kyphotic thoracic spine uh, where one measurement was up top. Let's go ahead and put the, three uh, the 3D on. Um, we'll do the first line, and then again, the same principle as the 3D measurement, we can scroll through the stack and pick another slice to complete our measurement, and then it gives us our value here. Then we'll see that in all the, the entire stack, basically. And that's the function of the 3D angle tool. Since we have a lumbar spine open here, we'll just also talk quickly about the spine labeling. So we'll switch to the spine labeling tool, and what we'll find is um, when we start to click, since this is a lumbar spine, the system recognizes that and starts at L5 and counts up through the vertebra. Um, now, if this was a cervical spine, it would have started at C2 and counted down, and a thoracic spine at T1 and counted down. And again, that's all based on the study description. Um, so obviously, if the description doesn't match something in our dictionary that's already built in, it may just start at the default, which would be C2 for anything that it doesn't recognize and then count down. Now, if you wanted to change these settings, uh, say for instance, I wanted to do vertebral spaces instead of the, uh, the bodies. Um, I can right click here and I'm gonna just reset everything to clear off those, spine, uh, those measurements. I'm gonna go to the uh, interspaces here and we'll start here instead. So once I pick this tab, um, now when I click, it's gonna start at L5 and count up as well. Of course, I didn't do that in the right spot, but we'll go here and so on. Again, if I wanted to change a few things, um, I want to point out, you see this does show up in all planes. So we see it on the coronal view here, also in the axial, those measurements in all planes. Some people don't like to see that everywhere. Let's go ahead and reset this. Some just may want to see them on the applied plane, like on the sagittal over here. In that case, you could uncheck these boxes here. Say don't show it on these planes, just show it on the applied. Or if I wanted it on all the sagittals, I could keep this checked and it would show on all the sagittals. Uh, so let me go back again. We'll start again at the bottom, going back up. You'll see it doesn't put it on the other planes. Um, all these settings here, um, those settings are also found on tools and options at the top. If you want to go into your spine, uh, the spine settings in there and your tools and options, you can change that permanently. The things I did here were just for this session. So once I um, open up another study, I'd revert back to the original settings with all these checked um, and so on. But uh, in your system settings and your preferences, you can change that if you wanted to start at L1 and count down for some reason, or if you wanted to do the vertebral uh, the spaces instead of the bodies, um, you can change that all in your settings. So we're going to close out of that. 
So now let's go back to our regular tools here and let's move on and just talk about uh, MAMO tools. Um, there is another MAMO toolbar which most users will have uh, by default that's part of the profile. Some users remove it. A lot of times it's grayed out if you don't do any MAMO viewing. Um, but the toolbar is available um, at the top. Uh, this patient has some CAD from a company called Deep Health. Um, uh, the CAD provider is listed here in this drop down. It is possible for some people use uh, multiple CADs on the same study. So, in the event that they did, uh, each CAD object that was on here would be listed, and the, the, the CAD vendor would be listed here, and you could choose which one you wanted to pick. Uh, this one just has the one from Deep Health. Um, if I wanted to toggle the CAD on and off, uh, we've got a show CAD button right here that toggles it on and off. And you could, of course, create a keyboard shortcut for that as well if you'd like. I have one. I programmed the letter C to do that. Um, and I'll show you how to do keyboard shortcuts in a bit. We'll talk about that briefly as well. Uh, this next button here is to move through the different types of CAD. So if there was another CAD provider like R2 or uh, CureMetrics or another vendor like that that, that had processed as well, and this was in PAX, um, you would click this button to toggle to that next CAD uh, on the list. The order that these, these are displayed, that's also customizable in your user preferences. So if you had more than one CAD in here, you could decide which one you wanted to be the primary to be shown. Um, next one over here is um, uh, the fit to breast button here. So if we um, resize the, the breast here, uh, move it over a little bit, um, make it smaller, whatever, this will snap it back into position over here and fit the breast and put it back to the edge of, of the uh, display for us. Uh, moving over to that, we have a couple other snap to anatomy buttons here. If we wanted to instead have it to go one the left, right side, this will just bring it back and forth. The fit the breast, it, this has actually become kind of a um, redundant tool since um, in today's world, the, the anatomy automatically snaps over to the side anyway. Uh, when we build hanging protocols, by default, it snaps to, to the back border, the back edge of the um, image. So it's always almost always there. But if you wanted to move it manually, uh, you could use this tool. It's just one that's built in there. Uh, to the right of that, we have uh, kind of like the magic glass. It's just a zoom for, for MAMO. It's just a little zoom window you can pop open if you like uh, to give you a magnified view. And then next to it here, we have the invert breast image. And I want to talk about the difference between this and the regular invert grayscale button over here. So the invert grayscale, which some people may be used to inverts the entire image, including the background here, which is white. So this can be kind of obnoxious for a, a breast imager to view with this white background here. It kind of hurts the eyes a little bit, right? Um, so what we've done is added an invert breast, which just inverts the breast tissue. Um, so that's a nice feature there for uh, anybody who wants to do an inverted view of the breast. One more here is a skin line detection. So this shows the skin line of the breast tissue here. Um, this is this piece is actually used to um, um, for that fit to breast to be able to invert the breast image only. The skin line detection kind of determines where the breast tissue is in this frame. Right? Some people like to see that from time to time too, so that's why we have that button there as well. Another set of tools some users like are the Cine tools. We can find them up here in the tools menu along with all the others. Um, if we click the Cine tools, uh, we can click the play button here. We'll start scrolling through the stack. Now that's not very convenient to have to go up here and do this every time. So this is a toolbar I haven't added anywhere and I'm kind of running out of space up here. But I would like to show you, I'm going to go ahead and stop this, but I would like to show you how to add a tool toolbar set uh, to your toolbar or somewhere so you have a better use of it than going up to a menu and having to pick it each time. So let's go to tools, customize, and from here since I have so many things up at toolbar top and I've kind of filled it up a lot, I'm going to go to toolbar bottom um, and I'm going to add a tool, uh, the Cine tools down here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is highlight Cine tools from the groups in the center. Okay. Shows you all the tools that are available there in the, as part of that group. Um, if I wanted to add some other tool set or some other tool um, to this, all the commands and tools in the system are listed over here. It's a very extensive list, um, but you can, you know, Start typing in here, and it'll give you all the tools that you have a choice of, right? Um, so I'm going to leave this alone. I've got everything I need here. So I'm going to just go ahead and move this entire tool set over here to the toolbar bottom. I'm just going to move it over. You can see it's added in here. I'm going to click OK. You see now I have that down here at the bottom, okay? So when I hit the play button now, you can see it's going to start, and now I can stop it. 
you know, without having to go to a menu to do that. Let's say I'd like to create a keyboard shortcut for that as well, so I don't have to go down and click a button every time. Well, there's several ways to create keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to start with the harder way, uh, which is creating a macro manually. So I'm going to go to Macro, Record Macro, press the Play button, because that's the function I want to do. I'm going to go back up here, click Record Macro again. Now it's going to prompt me to give it a name. We'll give it a label here. Cine. Then we're going to assign a shortcut key, keyboard shortcut. Right? In this case, I'm going to just pick um, letter F. All right, so we'll say OK. And now, if I stop this, pressing the letter F will start the play. Now, it doesn't stop it because I created a macro for the play button, which the play button just starts it, or just plays, right? It doesn't uh, stop at the same time. So there is a command to toggle play, uh, and we're going to program that instead. So I'm going to show you the easier way to create macros. Really, the recording of a macro, you only want to do if you need to do some combination of tools that you want to record or, or create a shortcut that does multiple things at one time or something that's not already an assigned tool. Um, so we're going to go back down here again to macro and shortcuts this time, which is going to open up our shortcuts menu. And we're going to go down here to main frames. This is where all your main keyboard shortcuts are when you're working within the image frames. Okay. So I created a tool and I called it play cine right here and I assigned it the keyboard shortcut F, right? If I wanted to change this to a different keyboard shortcut, I could, you know, I say change keyboard and then I could just pick another letter, but I don't want to change it. Uh, what I'm really going to do is just remove it because I'm going to assign a new shortcut for toggle play or toggle cine, right? So if I, if I type in cine again, um, we'll see here I have a choice for toggle play, right? So I'm going to pick this, I'm going to highlight it, click the arrow here, which is going to move it over to my shortcuts list in the main frame section. Then it's going to ask me for a key combination, and last time I used <clears throat> F, and I'm going to go ahead and use F again. It's added that, toggle play, so I'm going to say OK, and now when I click the letter F, or press the letter F, one press turns it on, and one press turns it off. So now it is actually the toggle, because that's the keyboard shortcut that I programmed. Um, now, down here you will notice in the Cine tools, um, the speed is set to um, five frames a second. That's the default is 15, but I went into my settings and changed that. So there is a setting that you can change in your uh, in your preferences uh, to change the cine speed. Actually, let me show you that real quick. We'll go to tools, options, and in the tools and options here, you can just do a search for the tool you're looking for. So I'm going to just type in cine, so I don't have to try to figure out where it is. Um, I want to go down here. You see the cine speed. If I reset this button here. That's resetting to the system setting. It's hard to see, but in there it says 15. That's 15 frames per second. Um, if I take this off, I can then adjust it to whatever I like to have my default be. And I had five before, I'll just leave it something like that. So now when I play the Cine in the future, or when I open a new study in the future, that Cine will start at, um, you know, that five frames or four point, whatever it was that I ended up setting in there. Um, it'll remember it for the next time you log in. Okay, now let's move on to some ultrasound tools. Um, so we'll move up, we'll open up an ultrasound study here. We'll find this study, um, they've done some measurements. We see here they've got a couple measurements uh, for the gestational age. They've done the femur length here. Um, we have a bunch of uh, tools up here as well. Femur length is one of them as well. So I can click this tool, femur length. Um, if they didn't do the measurement for some reason or was missing and I needed to do the measurement here in PACS, I could then do that as well. I'll just drag that over. And I've got something close. I didn't really measure exactly like they did, but you can see I've got the fetal age here. Um, if we scroll through, we'll probably see they have some additional measurements. Um, here's one earlier where I did as well. I did the um, um, abdominal circumference. Um, so I did that for this one. And we can see that kind of matches pretty close as well. So we have a bunch of different tools up here, um, you know, for um, fetal age that can be used as well for whatever reason they weren't done in the original uh, acquisition. Okay, let's move on and talk about a few other tools. I'm going to pick this CT here to start out with. Um, one thing we didn't talk about before was a tool called the Magic X. Um, so we click this. It's essentially a triangulation button. So if I were to click anywhere on this anatomy here in this axial view, you'll see my coronal view. And the same would hold too for sagittals. It moves to that position and it puts a little crosshair um, in that location on the other image. 
Um, so if I, same holds true if I go over here, try to follow the vessel down here like this, I can follow it right there on the, um, in the axial view as well if I want to follow it through. Uh, that's the magic X. And we'll notice over here, I put this in a lung window, and this was actually just a soft tissue series. Uh, it wasn't done on a lung algorithm, um, but at the same time, it's, um, it's a little hazy, and I want to maybe I want to sharpen that up and make it look like it has more of a lung algorithm. We do have some enhancement tools up here. I'm going to click the button right here and pick sharpness, and I'm just going to pick small. For CT, you don't need to make it very sharp. Uh, we'll just pick the small sharpness value, and we can see it gives a good edge enhancement here. Um, to allow you to look at what looks like a little bit more of a bony looking lung window in this case. Um, so that's the enhancement tool. And we're going to just look at one more tool, one more set of tools here on a plain film. If we go up to the tools menu, and this button isn't anywhere out here by default. Uh, it's not used very often, but you could certainly program the, uh, the system to have it as a shortcut on your right click menu or at the top if you like. If we go down to cursors here, we have one here called ROI with window level. Um, it's not used that often, but what this allows you to do is draw a box around the area and let it calculate a window based on that area, right? So if I draw a box right here, it's going to zone in on the lung here, and it's going to allow me to um, do that measurement right there on that space. You then go down here on the spine. You can see now it does a window level more geared towards the spine uh, instead. So it's just a quick way to get a window level. Um, uh, of that space without using the right click and you know to manually do it throughout the um, through the image and this will work on any different type of uh, images as well so if I wanted to go back to the CT I could do it here as well um, draw the same box over here to look at soft tissue a little bit more lung a little bit better bone you know so it'll it'll whatever area you're looking at or whatever you draw a box around that's what it calculates the window level for you one last setting I'd like to show you before we go if we go to tools and toolbars lock right here. If we uncheck that box, that allows us to resize some of these toolbars and maybe make some extra space if we need it. Say, for instance, I don't use some of these tools here at the end of this toolbar, but I still occasionally use them. I could slide this over, and they'll still be here in the menu below to pick. It just gives me some more real estate up here at the top. I can take a couple of these down like this. Say I don't use those so often. Maybe I don't use the rotate, you know, things like that. Um, and now I've cleaned up my space a little bit, then I can go back here and lock the toolbars into place again so I don't accidentally move them, but I still have access to all those via the drop down to the right. Okay, that's all I wanted to show you with the tools today. Um, thank you all for joining, and we look forward to seeing you again for our sessions next year.